Welcome. This, I'm Jim Nickus from the Castle Restaurant in Leicester, Massachusetts. Here we are. I'm Pete Swanson, filmmaker from Leicester, and we're at another episode of Stories from WineCountry.com. What do we got this week? Peter, we um, have kind of a, an interesting story. It's you know, one that I've actually even forgotten, and that does happen a lot at my age. But uh, um, in setting up a uh, Portuguese wine tasting that I have coming in the next couple of weeks, I, um, this story just popped right back into my head. And it is kind of an interesting story because it predates much of what we've been even talking about. Because this is um, in the very early 70s. Uh, you know, I had just started buying wine for the restaurant. But, uh, the wine kind of craze had not even taken over yet. Um, so it was uh, right at the very, very beginning. And um, the restaurant would do a, an awful lot of weddings. And in those days, people weren't necessarily interested in really fine wine. Um, it was more kind of generic. And if you think back, if you're old enough, what really made Portugal sing was Lance's Rosé and Matus. Um, those, were, those were the two big things coming out of Portugal. The rest of the winemaking was old world and didn't appeal to uh, a great deal of people. Uh, port was a different story, but we didn't really delve into port uh, significantly. Um, there was a certain click, but not overall. Most of the port went directly to England uh, because they're English houses. So with that kind of, um, you know, basis, uh, my family used to sell a lot of rosé for weddings. Uh, we uh, were invited to go to Portugal. Uh, we toured some vineyards. Uh, the one that we used an awful lot was a wine very similar to Matus called Morabasto. Beautiful castle, beautiful property. Uh, and actually the wine was quite good. Um, uh, and they invited us to, uh, to, you know, to tour and, and, uh, and uh, see their vineyards and taste their wines and, because they had more than just that, that simple wine. Um, so we did. Uh, we spent, and it was my, my mother, my father, myself, I was still in college, young kid, you know, 2019, no, 2021, somewhere in that, that area. Uh, and um, it was great fun, uh, an awful lot of, uh, of consumption, but uh, it was great fun. This was pretty much central in southern Portugal. When we moved to the north to visit Morabasto, it was, well, the restaurant was actually on winter hours then, so we weren't uh, open all through the, uh, the, uh, the week. Um, it, we are now, but uh, at that point in time, we were not. So, um, you know, it was cold. Northern Portugal is, is much like our, our temper climate. So, um, you know, they opened up a, a restaurant downtown in, in, uh, in Oporto, and it was just a gorgeous little restaurant, but no heat. So they bring in big space heaters around the table. And I can remember, you know, a, a, one of the chefs whipping up a concoction um, a sauce for one of the dishes, and the rhythmic beat of whisk to uh, to bowl was almost, you know, a, a trance. Um, and I'm this we're talking 40 plus years ago. I can still remember that. That it was like the rhythm devils, boom, boom, boom. Uh, it was. It um, we had a fantastic dinner. We tasted some wine. We went back to the Morabasto Castle. And the family wheels the cart into uh, to the library, and you know there's a series of ports and, and nuts and dried fruit, and, and um, so we're tasting a few of the ports, and, and um, you know being somewhat of a pain in the butt, I, I looked under the cart and I said, "What's that?" And it happened to be an 1898 um, Smith Woodhouse uh, vintage port, and. You know, I mean, I had some understanding of, of um, uh, you know, certain vintages, and if it's, it's a declared vintage, it has to be of a certain pedigree. Uh, but I had never seen anything that old. And they were just beaming with 
pride. They didn't own it, but it was their heritage. Um, opened the bottle and, um, and went beyond tasting at 1898. It was, uh, it was one of those very cold walks to the hotel, but you were warm from the inside out. And uh, it just, you know, it's a memory that's almost 50 years um, in the past, but one that just just stands out. Um, Morbaso is no longer available in this country uh, that I know of. Um, the castle's still there, the family still uh, makes wine. I think the Portuguese wine trade has gone through such a dramatic change with, with new winemaking techniques and, and clean and more vibrant wines and um, wines coming from specific uh, uh, agricultural areas that are defined for the quality in certain grapes. That uh, you know, these people are are um, are creating a, a huge niche in the market. So, can you describe what it's like <coughs> that 1898 port and what it tasted like? <laughs> <laughs> describe it. Um, it um, it was all kind of um, polished oak and wood tones with an overlay of, um, of really dense berry fruit. Um, it had started to lose some of its, uh, its color and its uh, intensity because you know it really was uh, at that point 70 plus years old. But poor well kept will go for an awful long time. Um, but yes, that, that kind of walnut, polished wood, um, berry intensity with a backbone of alcohol. Was it um, distinct from the other ports you were tasting oh, that yeah, night? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we were tasting new things. I mean, this is something from 1977, uh, which was really one of the greatest port years um, really in history. Um, and they're just now starting to, to come around um, you know, to, uh, to show their style. And we're talking, what, 23, 40 years old. Um, and they're just now starting to show their style. So what, what was so great about 77? With the harvest, the, um, the climate, the, the, um, uh, the weather patterns, um, they were just ideal for, for, if you could not make good port in 1977, a serious problem. Mm -hmm. And so what kind of wines is Portugal producing now? They're, not, they're out of the rosé business? Or? No, well, they're still in the rosé business. I mean, um, um, they're, um, the northernmost area, the Vino Verde, uh, produces some really great rosés also, besides that clean, sharp, intense, uh, you know, green wine, Vino Verde. But, um, you know, the, the wines like Parquita um, and an old, wine educator friend told me if you ever see Parakita Reserva on a label don't hesitate just buy the bottle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, wines like um, Garfier or you know, uh, things like Regrang Regrangos uh, you know they're just the, the grape varieties are somewhat different than we would um, normally you know be thinking of but there, there are distant clones to a lot of what we use, but um, the wines are quite spectacular. But the winemaking techniques are the, the whole um, change in philosophy with new winemakers, you know, cleaner, more vibrant, more fruit intense, more balanced, um, not that old world style of, of heavy wines. Uh, you know, they're rich, they're intense, but they're not, they're not heavy and cumbersome. So Portugal's holding its own in the, in the wine world? Oh, it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's been a rising star for, for a while. Uh, it just takes us some time to, um, to get used to it. But I'll tell you, if, uh, if I had a, uh, a destination, Portugal would be a destination. Can you, can you get some of those wines here in this country? Uh, we have a, a great... Um, Portuguese community in, in New Bedford and distributors there, but the, oh, every distributor has some some very good Portuguese wines. But uh, you know, it's I guess a, uh, we call it New Bedford. In New Bedford, they call it New Beige. Um, 
but the food, uh, Portuguese food, and the wine combinations are electric. What kind of what kind of uh, meals are people eating with these? Oh, things? you know, when these uh, these people do great things with uh, you know with with sausages and and uh, earthy tone type foods, but. Uh, yeah, it's Portuguese food is is magnificent, and the wines are are vibrant to blend with those foods. So that's great. Well, thanks. Another terrific story, and um, hopefully we'll do another one soon. Well, yeah, you know, you, it's it's funny because you forget certain things, and and they come to mind. I mean, this particular house has been in business since 1784, so you know if you think. Um, that was, you know, pretty much right after the American Revolution. You know, these people um, came on the scene, and they've been w making wine as long as this country's been the United States. So it's, it is, it's quite amazing. They have a history that's, um, you know, really, it's, it's in the wine industry is is paralleled by many, but unparalleled in their their quality. Well, great. Well, thanks, and Thank uh, we'll see you next time, and uh, enjoy. Two, three.